And episode 101 of White Claw Wednesdays, and we have another special guest this week, uh, my good friend, groomsman, uh, fraternity brother, uh, software engineer, the man, the myth, Inderpre Buttar. Hello, hello. Hey, man, welcome. Good to be yes. on the podcast. Welcome. So, <clears throat> I don't know, I just, I guess, give an intro on you, uh, you were a good friend of mine throughout college. Uh, we were also um, on the executive board and the fraternity together. Were we? No, no, not at that time. <laughs> Never together, yeah. Right. But Interpre was always a, a big head honcho in the fraternity. Um, and we were also in the same major, more importantly. So we basically were in the same classes throughout all four years. Got really close that way. Um, and now you are a software engineer for Lockheed Martin. That's correct. Skunk works. Skunk works. So, okay. So explain a little about uh, what you do and uh, what is skunk works. After we correct these claws. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Almost forgot about the, I always forget. <laughs> the yeah. starting, starting. Sometimes I just, I'm too into it, you know. You it's know, all I good. get that. All right, so All cheers right. it up. Oh, my gosh. I got another watermelon without a green cap. Cheers. 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 Get that right in the mic. Mm-hmm. Mm. There it is. Oh yeah, I spill some like a scrub, but it's okay. It's yeah, all right. Dude. I do that on. I do that on a, lot, a lot of my first sips. I spill a little bit. I had. I spent like an hour or all day working in the garage the other day, and I was like, "Oh my god, I just want to relax." And so I had a claw, and I literally spilled like half of it on me on the couch. <laughs> I was just like, "I don't even care." <laughs> just licking yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So, anyways, um. Yeah, just tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do um, for Lockheed. Uh, yeah, so I am a software engineer at Lockheed. Uh, currently working at Lockheed Aeronautics. Um, so think of fighter jets, UAVs, uh, drones. The real deal. Any, bro. Anything you can think <laughs> of. And I'm working in the R&D side of things. So they call it ADP for like the professional advanced program. Advanced development program. Development program. Sorry, yeah. I've R&D heard, I've heard research R- and development. I've heard R and D together before. Research and research development. Research and development. Okay. I hear that in movies all the time. Like, yeah, oh, the R and D department is. Uh, or yeah, uh, big CEOs out. be like, well, we need to do a little R and D on this. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so many times. Like, get over yourself. All right. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's also known as Skunk Works, and it started off um, actually in Burbank. Uh, my site did. And what we do is basically R and D for anything that I just listed, any of those type of aircraft, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they they got the name Skunk Works because they're in Burbank in in some factory hidden away next to a tire shop, and it always smelled. And I guess back in the day there was like a you know like a cartoon in the newspaper, mm-hmm. and um, one of the the animals or whatever was called Skunk. So somebody answered the mm-hmm. phone saying. You know, Skunk Works, and then mm-hmm. the name stuck since since then. But they're they're known for like um, the U two, which you guys have played the regular Black Ops one, right? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. the U two. So that that's the spy plane. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, spy yeah. plane. And uh, they're known uh, also for the uh, SR seventy one, the Blackbird, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. which is like the advanced spy plane. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess a, that was a good kill streak, dude. You knew where everybody <laughs> yeah. was. Is that nine kills? That was nine, twelve nine kills. kills. The twelve kills. I thought it was twelve kills. I thought the uh, dogs were twelve or thirteen. No, they were. Yes, they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. the advanced UAV was nine, and the dogs were twelve. That yeah, was yeah, intense yeah. because not only did you you were constantly got to see them, but where they were where facing. they were facing. Right, yeah. yeah, that was OP. Yeah, yeah that it was, was OP. super OP. <laughs> and and I guess the the only reason they made it so OP was uh, in real life history, it was never shot down. So it was wow. like I think till this day, it's known as one of the best. UAV planes. It's wow. not really a UAV, but like a spy plane. Is it a drone? No. So they had. Uh, they it pilots. was manned. Yeah. Okay. But I think the the fastest speed recorded on that. That's not like classified or anything. I think it was like Mach three or something. I don't even know what that means. Three times the speed of sound. <laughs> wow. So the speed of sound is so about. So what happens? Sorry. Wait. Speed is, of sound. Is, what is the speed is of the sound? Speed of sound like or the speed of light faster? Hour, right? Which one's faster, light or sound? sound. Or no, uh, light, 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 light faster. faster. Okay. Yeah. So wait, it sounds like 700 miles per hour, right? Yeah, about right yeah, around 750. there. 750. S- but when? Okay. So I'm kind of dumb. I don't know about this. But when a f- a a plane beats the sound barrier, it makes a huge noise. Oh, right? like huge. that that big so like that ring that like, forms right. around and it pops. Yeah. Is it? 
yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what happens when it's three times over? Does it do it three times? <laughs> uh, no. So it breaks that initial barrier, but then mm-hmm. it's just going that quick. And as you can imagine, it's super loud as soon as it breaks it. Mm-hmm. Like if it was to break it over us right now, it'd shatter all your windows. Wow. Damn. And so that's the reason why like we're not traveling at those speeds commercially. Yeah. Um, I know like this year United had like a, a campaign that they partnered up with some company to do like uh, Mach 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically like you could fly to la to i think like japan in three hours or so oh my god so we have the ability to do that with like commercial airplanes yeah since like the late wow. 90s yeah but we just choose not to um it's a combination of things right so like right now the cost is high and that's geared more toward companies where they need people there on site like mm. to it in a different country mm-hmm, quick mm-hmm. and then also you can't do it over the continental like or it's continental over the 48 states because mm. it's banned right now um, it's just so loud that, like I said, it'll shatter your windows. So is it actually, I don't even understand the physics of this. So is it actually the breaking of 700 miles per hour, whatever it is yeah. that causes a boom? Or is it plane going, let's say seven, 699 miles per hour would still break these windows, right? <laughs> uh, no, because it's not breaking the, the speed of sound. So what, what is it? What is it that makes the boom? I don't understand. Why is that the speed of sound? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, so. I mean, that's because that, that's, the, that's more of a physics question. So, yeah. bro, the people that yeah. made this simulation decided <laughs> so, to so, so wait, so <laughs> if, if there's planes that flying over our house, at breaking the speed of sound. If that would shatter windows, that does mean, does that apply to the whole, you know, I can sing so high that I shatter the glass. Is that the same kind of same sort of sound energy um, doing the same like breaking glass yeah so like what yeah it's basically the frequency the okay, the okay. yeah yeah i guess that kind of correlates okay so yeah because i mean you've seen those people like hit that right. extremely high notes with the glass right next to their mouth and it shatters right i think yeah. that's real i don't know maybe no, it's definitely. Okay, no, yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those movie things yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> interesting so okay First of all, did you do you just know this stuff, or is this something? Does this that you come were with the trade? You have to know to you while know, you work were there. Yeah, so like I don't know anything about aircraft, but you know, right, right. Or right. Even now, like my my level of it's very rudimentary. I'm not like an expert in, on any of this. Mm-hmm, when I came mm-hmm. there, I didn't even know what an F-35 was, and I that's don't like know what the, that is now. It's like the bread and butter fighter jet that they sell to other countries as well. Oh, really? So that's Whoa. like the one that they that makes a lot of money for the company. So we so Americans sell uh, weapons to other countries. Yeah, we're all the time, dude. The reason why we're the number one defense country is because we sell it to all the other countries all the time. And do we ever sell it to enemies? Because that would be weird. Yeah. Well, that was the whole Al Qaeda situation, okay, right? right? Because we supplied, we supplied. I don't. We don't have to get into it. Isn't but that we what supplied weapons? Isn't kind of. I don't know if you guys heard of the movie War Dogs. Group. Yeah. War Dogs with Miles Teller and Joan Hill. Isn't that what yeah. that movie's about? Kind of. Um, that's more of arms, <laughs> okay. rather than. But they were supplying the enemy with guns, right? In a way, in that movie. It, it's more. Uh, um. So they weren't supplying enemies, but they were supplying uh allies, right? Uh-huh. But. Allies can always become enemies, right? Sure, it's never yeah, uh, exactly, right. yeah. So that's that's what happened with Al Qaeda was. Yeah, we supplied them to take over like whatever militant group was mm-hmm. in charge, and then we stepped up and pissed them off, and yeah, then they used our weapons against us. That's pretty much what happened. Yeah, uh, to sum it up. Yeah, to basically to to you know we supply them overthrow their government. Yeah, yeah. They do it, and then uh you know so turn on us. And yeah. Then, yeah, they're like, yeah, we're coming for you. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so Lockheed, right? So you are, um, see, I don't know what I can and can't say, so That's I'm fine. just going to let, let you, know. you go. Interpreet is like, he's official, all right? I mean, he's real. He's the real deal. I mean, this guy works on some crazy stuff. I don't even know what he works on. Yeah, so. So are you like coding? Are you doing coding for them? Yeah. So you could potentially be coding the code that allows for an Xbox 360 controller to control a fighter jet that drops a bomb, right? That's funny for a, for a sim, like something I can talk about. Like we have a sim for uh-huh. like what we're creating, right? Yeah. So it's like a desktop sim mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you, you can actually plug in an Xbox uh, controller and Sick. control it. I've heard about so, that, yeah. It's like Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft, it's Microsoft. Simulator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. That's cool. So am I allowed? What? Uh, so you've signed, can I say that or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Interpret's like signed an NDA. Like he's... Yeah, he's, he's got classified information, um, so I don't want to push and like say things 
or like put you in a corner here. Don't worry. You know? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So I'm going to let you like take this, but uh, like, what do you do for, for Lockheed? Yeah. So day to day, writing software. So the software I work on um, is on the air vehicle software. So like the software I write lives on the vehicle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's like embed- an embedded system. Right. It's okay, an embedded yeah. system. So embedded software, I guess right, you can right, say, right? right? Um, so yeah, I guess day to day activities we do. I'm a, I'm also the scrum master, so kind of like the, a little bit more of the lower level team management, like everyday you know day to day management, as well as just writing code and and um, you know having products come to to real life, I guess. Very cool. And wow. uh, the interesting thing where I work is like you know you you hear about all these big defense contracts. But where I'm at, it's not really the case. Each project is almost like its own startup. It's like you're given this amount of funding, mm, really? prove this technology. You'll get more if you prove it. But if you don't, then, you know, <laughs> or the customer, right, could just say, we're not interested in that anymore. We're, we want to go somewhere else. Huh. So are you, you – so you're not making um, software for the government or you are and they are the customer? Yeah, so I mean, the government can be can be a customer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other countries can also be a customer, mm. right? Um, it, it it really depends on what what the pro- end product is. I see. Yeah, I see. Okay, so can you tell us what like actual vehicle you are working on, or is it kind of general? Like it's just a software for that. No comment. Oh wow! Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. What no, if, it's okay. I don't want to get you in trouble. Like, what if um, what if you find yourself having to fly like a jet? Like just like things happen, you know. Things things just happen, and you end up stepping into a jet, and everyone's like, "Okay, this is our only way out of here. The zombies are coming," you know. Yeah, like a p- like apocalypse like happens. In, as like in skunk works. Who like and, all and, the way down like level forty? And, they're like oh, they're yeah. evacuating, and go, they've go. and they've like stumbled on like a Black Hawk jet or something, and like oh, you're the got only Black Hawks there. You're yeah. the only yeah, and nobody else. Everyone's like you're just with the like, three janitors, yeah. like act, like the actual janitors okay. at the place, so they don't know. Right. So then they look at you and they're like. Can you fly this? Can so, you fly that? Let me just set the scene, right? <laughs> that that's all happening. It's you and three janitors. Okay. Your manager's there as well. And he's like, Go, pack the aliens up and let's get out of here. <laughs> get them all there. Yeah. Like Tom Hanks and Top Gun yeah, or something. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Exactly. No. No? Okay. No, no. That there's hundreds of hours of Trading. Flight, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I would probably crash it before I even <laughs> took off. <laughs> it would go on the runway and I'd like make a wrong have turn. Have you seen or have you seen one like in person? Dude, yeah. So I flew out to uh, Fort Worth. That's where yeah, yeah. the Aero HQ is at. Oh, cool. And um, there's one flying out every minute or so. It is wow. amazing. Yeah, very cool. It's cool. So, and these are the these are the black triangles things with like the triangles on the bottom, right? Like that's what like a Black Hawk is. Like, it's like it's like a oh, it's like a, the, the the super stealth ones. No, that that's you're a saying. stealth bomber. That's you're a, thinking of stealth. Bomber. That's a stealth bomber. That's a a Black stealth Hawk bomber. is an actual. I don't know. It's an airplane that goes up, and it doesn't so look it, like it, a UAV. But it looks it, okay. Okay. Well, I'm my knowledge is from Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, so. that's where my knowledge is from too. That's exactly where I'm getting all my answers. It's not the stealth bomber, though. Yeah, it's different. I believe the Blackhawks are more like choppers than than they are. Oh um, wait, what are we talking? Blackbird. 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 Yeah. Blackbird. Yeah. Blackbird. Blackbird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the Blackhawk is what. Yeah. Lockheed. Also isn't, makes wait, that. isn't a Black That's Hawk a different division? Isn't yeah, a Black Hawk a helicopter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, a helicopter. yeah, like Black Hawk yeah. down. Yeah. Black Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's about that's about a crashed helicopter in the Afghan in the Iraq War, I think. Um, that's no, when they about, killed Osama bin Laden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Black Hawk Down is not about when they killed Osama bin Laden. That's no? thirty. That's zero dark thirty. Is that, okay. Oh, that's probably that's zero dark yeah, thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Black Hawk Down came out before. I I even oh, think bin Laden oh, was like an that's enemy, right? Because because Black Hawk Down was like a two thousand one release. It was early two thousand. Great movies. So. Great movies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you feel like? Uh, sort of contributing to to that stuff. I mean, well, like, because it's a it's a weird scenario, you know. A party is like, yeah, you know, if there's gonna be one, you know, super quote unquote superhero superpower. Like, we want it to be us. We want to produce the best weapons. But at the same time, like, it's got to be somewhat of a moral battle. Being like, is this what I, you know? It's a huge moral battle. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because like you never want your end product to take somebody's life. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And you never want it to contribute to war. Right. But it's just also like, um, 
you know, I think the defense budget got a little bit bigger this past year. And it's like, oh, that's job security. Right. But, right. you know, it's taking away money from other stuff. And it's like, you just hope that, you know, this gets used in a good way. Right. Whatever yeah. you're working on. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's kind of like, you know, I was talking to a buddy about working at Google or Facebook. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. they're mining your data like crazy. <sighs> right. And if you're an engineer there, you just hope it gets used in a good way. Right. Most of right. the time it won't. Right. 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 Like you hear about all of this, like Google, like, you know, actually supported propaganda and all this other stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Facebook's like right. terrible. With that. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Facebook. Yeah. And it's just like well, Google too. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you do have those moral qualms. But if you're not working it, somebody else will. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And very true. And I. It seems like the way America really retains power is because of the defense. It's a hundred percent, hundred percent, like without a doubt. Yeah, and you know, you get these briefings on where like other countries are at with certain technologies, and you're like, "Oh wow, wow really? that is that is scary." I bet yeah. China, huh? Like scary, yeah. like that's better than us, or scary, like that's nowhere near what we can do. Scary as in, mm. wow, they are actually not like on the back burner anymore in terms of like defense because uh, they poured a whole lot of money into their defense side. And do you right. think that comes from us being on top in that arena for so long? Yeah, I think I think it comes with that and just this cold war that mm. is kind of going on with China that nobody acknowledges. It does seem like mm-hmm. there is like and that's also I see that in like the way the NBA players are with, you know, handling the their popularity in China. Like right. you have LeBron yeah. James who right, yeah. who refuses to like say bad money things talks. about China and money then you talks. have you have Ennis Cantor who silences. changes who changes last name to Freedom yeah, uh, yeah in order yeah. to like show that like the communist government in China is bad or something like that or like oh no he's from Turkey isn't he yeah but he's trying to like he's trying to you know make oh, a that was like a he changed his last name to Freedom because of the way like yeah. China is with the NBA and LeBron and Nike and I I, like, I don't know the details yeah. I just know it's it's like you said a cold war where it's like there's like a war happening mm. but there's no you know, bombs being dropped. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, or like Jack Ma disappearing after he talks bad about, uh, China, right. For like a couple weeks. Wait, who's I this? Hear about Jack this. Ma, the Alibaba founder. Really? That's why their stock dropped <gasps> a bit. No way. Yeah. He like, wow. he said something bad about China and uh-huh. then he like disappeared for a bit. And like, while he disappeared, the stock like kind of Isn't that a Chinese company? Wow. It is. Yeah. But Jeez. What, did you guys hear about the tennis player? Oh yeah, she was she, something. Uh, she, yeah, what? she called out like a, a super sexual high sexual harassment person in government yeah, for sexual government, harassment yeah. and disappeared. Disappeared. Yeah. And then all these like, <clears throat> you know, the sports realm was like, where did she go? Mm-hmm. You know, I guess she wasn't a part of a tournament, and then they can't they canceled all tennis in China or the tennis, one organization, like, organization that worked with them. Yeah. yeah. Man. So that's wild. And they've the government sent out like proof of life video or whatever, yeah. but or. Uh, audio but yeah man and then they're no joke did you did you read the letter that she wrote oh no i didn't yeah it's like i didn't because i was like there's no way it's from her yeah oh it wasn't from her like it's a letter basically explaining why she's disappeared yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) so uh, china the thing is about china is like china and america are somewhat it's it's like a weird relationship because we we want their money, but not their values in a way. Well, we seems want like. their their labor, their work. Yeah, like that that cheap products. That that that's like would kind of falls in the money. money. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like all this stuff, all this this is from China. Mm-hmm. You know, hell like no, our, I didn't like buy our, American for hundred dollars. And like, all, aren't yeah. all our iPhones in made in China? Yeah. yeah, parts of it. Yeah, yeah. most of it. Um, so it's kind of like a hard hard thing to get rid of. It's like. I don't support China. I don't like what they do. But at the same time, it's like 90% of the products I probably buy are from China. Yeah. You know? Without a doubt. Yeah. And it's it's like I'm definitely supporting them. You know, there's yeah. a tariff on that and China gets obviously the money. So I don't know. It's like, what do you do? You know, without China, economy collapses. Right. Without a doubt. Yeah. So. And you have weird <clears throat> things like, of course, I got to relate it to superheroes. Yeah. Iron Man 3, the version they released in China had a whole 20 minutes added to it, which was just all, you know, Chinese surgeons figuring out how to remove Tony Stark's, uh, you know, metal heart. Are you serious? Yeah. I said the Chinese, wow. the Chinese version of Iron Man three basically has a Chinese like Grey's Anatomy episode <laughs> where they're, where they're trying to figure out how to take the heart out. And, and no it's all, way. it's all like they're speaking, you know, they're speaking. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's it's and they put that in just for the Chinese version, just to make more money overseas. And like wow. Americans have no idea about it unless you like you know watch YouTube videos breaking down the <laughs> movies and shit. But it's it's funny to see that. And the same thing happens with like movies like Jurassic World. Yeah, they add a Chinese character, and then they they have her on screen for more in the version that they release over there, and then less on screen in the American version. It's it's uh, yeah, like it goes in the same thing. They want they want the money from over there, but not the values. I mean, there's a billion people there, right? So mm-hmm. you can't really, if you piss off the government, that's a billion people that won't be buying your product or supporting yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem is the government has like literally full control right. of everything, um, which is just insane. You know, I was I was reading something. Actually, I think my grandpa, he is like he's an old electrical engineer. Oh, cool. And he subscribes to the whole IEEE thing. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like the magazines and stuff. <laughs> Wait, the what? It's uh. Jeez, I don't even know what it stands for, but it's a le- it's a engineering organization. Oh, okay, is what yeah. it is. I got you. Um, and he was telling me that uh, China has eight routers, eight routers that everything outside of their country goes through. Wow, eight routers. So there's a router right there. Actually, yeah. in fact, I have two routers right there, but I'm only Jeez. using one. <laughs> yeah. Every household in America has a router. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um. So it's like they can monitor all of that, everything that comes in. You know, it's probably an insane amount of data and they can't manage it, of course. But still, the fact that they're trying to manage it through eight routers that goes through their their country is just insane to me. Um, Their whole technology infrastructure is completely different, even down to the way they they type. So uh, with China, or you know how like our, uh, our keyboard... And softwares kind of sometimes give you like suggestions and stuff like that. Oh, like the next word to pick? They'll basically suggest the word that you're typing as you're typing it, you know. But because of the way that the uh, Chinese language is written and uh, how they speak it, I guess, um, it's a lot harder to do that because you're combining words together to make a character quote unquote which is kind of like a phrase right yeah so yeah because in in you can have one symbol that means like a whole sentence right right. exactly yeah 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 Yeah. so the way they do it is they're basically suggesting what you're trying to say and all of this is running through the chinese government of course so basically they're they almost have control of the language that is spoken Mm -hmm. Uh, so much to a point where, like, I feel like if you typed out something bad about the Chinese government, they would know. Like, they they flag right. it down. Oh, I yeah. see what you're saying. Okay, you know? yeah. I would be afraid of that uh, while I'm in the country texting about it. You know. Yeah. So it's just it's just a crazy, crazy thought. You know, yeah. it's like we 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 were always like thinking about and afraid of, you know, companies monitoring us like Google and Facebook. Like, right. I download like DuckDuckGo, which like doesn't, <laughs> yeah. you just save your search data and stuff. Brave, man. That's the wave. But it's just like, oh yeah, Brave. Yeah. Get those, those BAT tokens, <laughs> yeah. huh? So basically what you're saying is for my EDD unemployment account that I had mm-hmm. throughout the pandemic, mm-hmm. if I were to put my scenario into the Chinese, you know, umbrella, sure, I would find myself with someone knocking on my door since my username was government pays 69. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, that would <laughs> probably, probably would have gotten them, yeah. gotten you'd their attention. Flag, bro. You, yeah. You'd be in you'd be in jail, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no without a Some doubt, underground cave for that. Yeah. 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 It's just kind of crazy how we have to live in like unison with with China because they create so much of our products. And like I like cheap goods, you know. I do too. I like cheap goods. That's one Everybody of my. Does. I mean, go ahead. That's one of my favorite Office episodes when Michael has to have the debate with Oscar about China. And, oh yeah. And Michael's like, he's he's reading the magazine. He's like, man, everything's made in China now. And then Andy's just like, yeah, that's where they make things. <laughs> <laughs> he's like so comfortable with it as a fact. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. It's because they pay their workers like <laughs> two cents for an hour or something. And don't they yeah. use child labor too? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they do. It's probably not as bad as it used to be, mm-hmm. but it's still pretty bad. Yeah, I still mean, we like we would you know hear yeah. the hear the numbers and be like yikes. And, and yeah. they also house them too, so like they keep them close to the factories. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, they house them, and I think wow. they like at max. I think they get a day off. I was like looking at some documentary for, just you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you get into that you know rabbit hole, uh-huh. but yeah, you get I think like usually Sunday off. 
and you're and, saying. and the hours that they aren't working during a day are pretty much the hours that you would need to sleep yeah. to have like a normal yeah healthy life yeah 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 that is crazy man completely different scenario yeah I will actually just imagine it reminds me I watched a documentary about you know China and the the industrial industry and how like you said they they live in a house that's like a, just a five minute walk from where they're you know building things all day and right. it's crazy to see the like you'll see one person in this documentary and they're making one little piece of a sewing machine. So it's like you have a sewing machine with a hundred parts and their yeah, entire yeah. day is putting together just one of the hundred wow. pieces yeah. and they do it for 16 hours yep. just constant. And yep. they're so fast at it too. <laughs> and they look like robots. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, that, yeah. and that's what was so interesting. The opening shot of the documentary is an 18 minute one shot where you, they just set the camera up on one end of the factory and they move slowly down the entire line of workers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it goes on for like, 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 like I think it's like 15 or so minutes and the camera doesn't cut. Wow. And the crazy thing is you see probably like 200 workers and maybe like one or two of them looks up at, and reacts to the camera. Oh my They're God. all so zoned in. Wow. Cause you know, how like Americans, when, you, when you see a camera, they're like, Oh yeah. Like yeah. they just start freaking yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Peace out. Yeah. and all these people Peace were just, love. just so like, like the camera didn't even exist. It was, it was really, it was weird to watch. Yeah. That's surreal. Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen, um, that Netflix documentary where a Chinese company tried setting up a factory here and they just kept running into so many issues really i forgot what the end product was but uh-huh. yeah like basically the americans here were trying to like unionize and they're like fighting it hard because mm. like that's not a thing in china yeah, <laughs> yeah no <laughs> definitely no, i didn't not. see that that, that sounds, sounds like interesting a, yeah. Yeah. watch actually yeah it is yeah i was i was scrolling through reddit the other day and there's this uh subreddit called watch people die inside oh where that's gonna, it's, it's it's hilarious it's gonna be both funny and sad at yeah. the same time <laughs> well yeah it's usually just funny but it's one of the the posts was uh, just a Chinese like quality assurance worker, mm-hmm. and it was like for some like ketchup fact I don't know what it was. It was some like like a condiment product, and there's just bottles like going across the conveyor belt, and like she's just sitting there like this, just staring. <laughs> Just not even like nodding her head, just like watching them. So go is by. her job just to make sure every bottle gets a label or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, just make sure I guess it's filled or something. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> like she'll grab one if it's not. Dang. But like, so that's your job is you're a watcher. You, you, yeah. Like, yeah. You look like a watcher, dude. Yeah. Like quality assurance get is, to it. is funny. It's like it's literally everywhere that you have a product. <laughs> that's what Creed. That's what Creed does in the office. He's oh, quality, he's quality yeah. assurance. No wonder his job's so easy. <laughs> That's so funny. I love how they never said that until that episode. Until the episode, it's like they have. He's like, he Creed, even know. no idea what yeah. they did. He's Meredith, like, Meredith, <laughs> no idea. Creed, your quality insurance. I think you really screwed the pooch on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes through and finds his excuse. Mm-hmm. Oh man, such a good episode. Like a few seasons before, they ask him what he does, and he didn't even. He know has no it. idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, QA is a funny job. QA is like really important in software, though. Yeah, it's like it's that would oh that doesn't that go along in the lines of like us talking about video game testers and how that would actually be a yes. shitty job? Yeah, because you have to do everything in the game that isn't fun and isn't right. normal, like yeah. run into the corner wall. Like imagine being a manual QA tester for like Call of Duty or something like that. I can see why it's got so many bugs. Yeah, <laughs> back, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, <laughs> but back in the day when like there was like uh, two minute loading screens, oh, mm-hmm. and, like you literally got to like pick your specific gun, camo, right. whatever you know, right. go to a corner and double tap Y, do some jumps or whatever. It's like I can't even imagine how boring it would be all day. <laughs> Yeah, and then they're not good enough at it because every single game it seems has has a, like a yeah, has a yeah, bug yeah, in it yeah. that you can take advantage of, yeah. or that you get totally fucked by. They should just pay like middle schoolers for that. It's they should dude, that honestly, be, honestly, yeah. Put them all in a chat and be like, "Oh my god, look what I found!" <laughs> like they could that do like, would be a good child labor. They could act they could do an after school. I'm not supporting this. <laughs> <laughs> they, they could do an after school program. That's yeah. what they could do. And they'd be like, all right, you either go here and make money and play video games or you just, you know, sit and do your homework. And the kids are like, wait, I get paid to play video games? Exactly. They'd fall for that so fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. definitely have some parent complaints, though. Once the kid comes home and tells mom what he's actually doing, like, mom, I'm not playing Fortnite. I'm actually running into a wall over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, you know. It is a cold war from the scenes of it, but uh-huh. what can you really do, right? Like, you know, like you said, Apple, right? They, they're 
working out of China for their end product, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then which other phone company do you go to? Because they're all Android. right. Yeah, they're all working out of China. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's true. So do you have a choice? Yeah, exactly. That's what. That's why it's funny. Like when someone like my dad is like, I refuse to buy Apple because of the whole you know China labor thing, and then I'm thinking, oh. well, you know, your Samsung was probably built in China too. Right, yeah. right. So it's like, or another country that has super cheap. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, you know, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, it's it's some people don't actually kind of realize that you know when it's, oh. it's all kind of about the social thing and it's always like oh you know, and this goes back to kind of your job interpret. It's like people are always like oh you know why does the U.S. have to do this? Why you know defense? Like people who are just so like socially like utopia as right. you know. Just like it, it, it can't happen. It can't happen. At least not within the near future or the far future. There needs to be, like, if you think that we're gonna be safe if we get rid of our military, you're no. you're kidding yourself. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, countries yes. will invade us so quickly, so quickly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> imagine. Oh my God, China would be on our doorstep within like a week. Imagine it's, that as like ridiculous. a t- like a test run. Like, okay, you know. Yeah, I'm, gonna, what they I'm gonna prove. I'm gonna prove a point right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm sending all the troops. You guys are all going home, yeah. putting all the guns away. We're locked. We're burying them in a hole. Yeah, and we're just gonna kick our feet up and see what happens. You know, it's ridiculous. Honestly, it's like countries will totally be a problem. Oh yeah. Know? So it is necessary. It sucks that it's necessary. I wish it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But until we get to a point where humans can. Uh, not only politically unite, but also socially, um, and yeah. culturally. You think so, though? I feel like it's human nature to, to not. I, it just, you know, it depends because, like in my eyes, it's like human nature is always to, like you're always looking at another group of people and you're like, oh, this is why we're different, you know, right. and like yeah, there's always that core belief of like, oh, we're the same species and like, you know, we don't want to like judge other groups, but. I do think it is human nature, but, but I do think that we'll get to a point where it's not as pronounced, you know, right. where you have a border and you have such different cultures. It's like right. the way that we are uh, traveling and mixing cultures, especially here in the United States, I think that it's going to become less and less pronounced over time. Now, we're never going to get to a utopian society because humans are flawed, right? right? It's, exactly. just, it's, it's impossible. Right. But I think we can get closer. I definitely do. Um, and even socially within this nation, I mean, we've made great strides just over the past, I think, three years. Like with all the crazy stuff that happened, you know, we look at our flaws and then we sort of recalibrate, you know. Right. Um, even if it is in, you know, an overcorrection, eventually we'll go back and we'll, we'll unify. But um, I do think that we'll get there. We'll get closer to there one day. How did uh, the the pandemic and everybody, you know, staying inside for 2020 how did that affect your uh you know monday through friday nine to five it didn't so you still you still went in everything every day? was essential okay, okay. Yeah. yeah but he gets essential off. okay you get fridays yeah. off that's pretty uh, cool sometimes well, sometimes so, when i'm not when i'm not right? working like crazy hours yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah i mean it didn't affect us at all it oh was, okay you're you know considered essential keep mm-hmm. coming into work you know some people especially like a little bit more on the business admin side, mm-hmm. probably didn't have to be in every single day. So they were able to kind of work from home. Yeah. But you know, if you're working classified program, you have to be on. Yeah. Right. Well, what is that? Like what you're saying, what does that tell you about how important our military is right. in that your job falls under the essential, you know, category and probably to the general idiot like me, I wouldn't have thought that that was, <laughs> that was essential category. I had no idea that, you know, obviously, but it makes sense when you think about it. Yeah. We got to always, you know, have our, it's basically our, you know, a, a defense shield. You always right. got to have your shield up. Are you, you know? allowed to talk about like the preparations for like going into the office? Like, cause I know when we were talking previously, I was like telling you about, I mean, I'm working on a public, like this is a public it's a per, it's a secure network, but it's a public network. I mean, people can access this network if they really wanted to. Oh wow! So <laughs> you're thinking they can't access <laughs> yeah. my network? It's closed <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a home, right? So like, people can try and oh, access I see. It. Yeah. Um, I think technically it's called a private home network, but like, I, you're I talking about someone like breaking into your Wi-Fi router, like knowing your password and getting through the whole lock system. Is that what you're talking about? Sure, sure, okay. but. I mean, because I doubt, I doubt, 
I doubt the Wi-Fi password where he works is password. <laughs> yeah. There is no Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's exactly. You see, there's no Wi-Fi. It's all Ethernet. Dude. Dude, I can't bring in my. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. There's no laptops. Wow. It's all Ethernet. So talk about your preparations. That's cool. Like, are you allowed to bring your phone in? Do they do they scan you? Like what? Yeah, yeah. So, or if you can. Yeah. So um. Just to get onto my site, you need an interim secret clearance. Mm. Um, wow. And so <laughs> Damn, that's... that's usually enough to trust you uh-huh. uh, because initially you won't be, you know, selling government secrets to other countries. They yeah. trust you not to do that at that yeah. point. Right. So. Wow. On the to- uh, topic of COVID, uh-huh. uh, really nothing. It was just to make sure that you don't have COVID. So if you're feeling sick and well, like, you know, get yourself tested as soon as you can. Yeah. And, and let them know mm-hmm. but other than that mask up mm-hmm. and in terms of you know what he was saying the security side it's interesting uh, i don't have my phone on me most of the day uh, it's wow. outside the room mm-hmm. not allowed to bring in phones um if i want to bring in um earphones mm-hmm. uh they have to get approved through our security personnel wow um so like you know like apple ear like i don't think AirPods. yeah those beats wouldn't work really? because you have a mic in that uh, yeah so someone could hack into this somehow yeah they don't want people listening at all right yeah 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 because they get right here right here on the end of my yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right here right so yeah that would be that'd be a what problem. about airpods <laughs> they check your airpods no those, those nothing have, bluetooth those have mics yeah nothing, yeah. Have mics. Bluetooth. nothing nothing bluetooth yeah, so that's that why i can't sense. bring in my phone so wow. you're telling me is bluetooth hackable hackable apparently i guess so so oh, like geez. the greatest <laughs> hacker in the world well, could, so the greatest hacker in the world could probably like hack into like someone's airpods if they're in like a classified area and they could use their airpods as a mic to pick up yeah secrets that are being talked about yeah wow. you'd have to you'd have to be able to like pick up the bluetooth signal right right yeah, yeah. You would. but even then like you don't want to risk that you yeah know? right yeah so you want to make sure you're as safe as you can be from a security point of view mm-hmm. um even like all the machines we use like i wish i could have a home office but right yeah. that's just not that's feasible just not a, yeah yeah I, like i have to work in a specific room where the network is set up <laughs> And I can't be outside of that. It's right. Wow. I mean, it's 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 crazy, but at the same time, it, it just it makes sense. It makes you know? sense. It's right. like these are really highly valuable mm-hmm. things you're working on. You know, and yeah, and you you might have a small part in just that. It's it's kind of like the assembly line thing that right. you were yeah, saying. Right. It's like you're just working on a small part right. of the grand scheme, and you've got a lot of teams, and of course the hardware and engineering team right. who's actually making the vehicles. But yeah. are you in your own private room? Or are you working like with a two people on your sides, like in the other desks, or how is that like? Yeah, there's other desks. Okay. It's like a full office, but full it's, office. It's just for, uh, yeah, okay. but like. So once you get into that zone, it's like everybody's in this zone, kind of phoneless and just working. It sounds like there's no distractions then, you know, because if if you don't if you're the, yeah. the average American, I feel like, when they're not working, they're on their phone, you know, scrolling. Oh, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. So right. if you don't have your phone, then the productivity yeah. must just... Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I can always go outside mm-hmm. the room and in the building where my phone's at, just, you know, scroll yeah. on my phone. But, like, service in the building is terrible. Probably on purpose. Uh, on purpose. Yeah. As soon as you enter the building, it's like, I get one bar if that. <laughs> like, I don't know if you've texted me and it, like, doesn't go through. Oh, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. And it's because it's, yeah. Or I'll text you and you'll reply, like, hours later. Yeah, it's because I finally got on my Which phone. Is, <laughs> you're, you're trying to I do that too. But you're <laughs> trying to send one text through about a thousand walls of concrete. I don't have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got he's, he's in a secure secured area. It's with, so funny, like uh, the fact that it's called Skunk Works because this is like a, it's almost like an official coin, you know. And it is on your LinkedIn. You have like Skunk Works at. You know Lockheed Martin, right? And I texted Interpret. I was like, "Are you just like trying to flex, or <laughs> is this actually called Skunk Works?" And it's it is official. Like, mm-hmm. there's a Wikipedia page. There's a Wikipedia it's legit page yeah. called Skunk Works. Yeah, which is just insane. Um, That's how and, you know something's official. There's a wiki. Well, I didn't know this, but you kind of explained it to me that the engineers there sort of take pride in being quote unquote a skunk a skunk yeah mm-hmm. like being down there a lot yeah and working hard yeah and i don't know maybe they smell i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean you know they've since moved from burbank to, to palmdale oh right, right yeah right. yeah so oh okay okay so there is so um, are you not below ground can you say that or no 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 thankfully not oh, okay cool, yeah cool. I- if i was below ground i wouldn't even have been able to tell you 
Uh, that you were below ground. Wow. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Or that's what they tell it's, them. It's, that's what they tell them to say. Yeah. It's unacknowledged at that point. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I see. Okay, cool. So, Damn. yeah, I mean, people take a lot of pride um, in skunk works. Just, mm-hmm. And I had no idea. I'm not an arrow guy. Right, right. right. But, like, I guess the storied history behind it has caused um, basically, like, we have a lot of top arrow talent. Mm. and i mean it's lockheed martin you know yeah yeah and then like outside your, of that your yeah. products <laughs> well, I mean, everything is <laughs> everything's inflated <laughs> <laughs> well i mean no one else is making them as good as you you know you, you yeah. might you know it, it's it's crazy because i mean as a quote-unquote engineer you're creating this product and you're you know all the issues with it you know right but at the same time it's like has anyone made something that's better you know like at mckesson we always used to talk about our, our competition our competition and i'm yeah. just like Ooh. i know our product is not that great but like how do we compare to all these other products right like right. i know they can't be that great either you know right. like it's it's healthcare and you know whatever but so i'm assuming it's the same as yeah so with the, everything most, yeah. most part i mean <clears throat> so where i work is like you have contracts right and and the way the contract with the government will work is if it's something brand new like r d wise mm-hmm. um you know you'll have a few companies competing for it in different phases and it's either all right you know they'll each get to each phase right mm-hmm. so phase one two and three okay or they'll drop them off like flies if they don't like them. So after phase one, if they don't like them, sorry, we're only going to stick with these three companies. Right? Wow. Hmm. And in each phase, it keeps going like that. It depends. So it's like you, there's a there's a contract out. Let's say it's like the Border Patrol and they're, they're searching for some type of radar or, I don't know, infrared scanner or something, right. something right. like that. They sort of create a request for like a proposals from from companies correct yeah just to see um you know how much cool. it would cost and what the timeline is what's and, what yeah. solution could right. possibly bring out right. oh, okay wow man that is crazy so can you talk about i mean i'm just imagining as an engineer in that scenario having this sort of deadline that you've committed like that's got to be really hard because it's really hard, at least as a software engineer, to uh, to describe the commitment to upper management. And oftentimes, they're like a business. They're not you know, technical. Yeah. Right. And so they're sort of talking about, or maybe they come from a technical background, but you're, you know, you're in business and you're trying to sell, quote unquote, your team, your product. So how hard is it when it comes to like deadlines and stuff like that? Because... I know, at least from from my perspective, is that tends to happen uh, from my work is like the business will commit to this and that, and it's just it's not really feasible a lot when it comes to timelines that they're given or were given. Yeah, so thankfully, because it's R and D, like engineers have a, a decent amount of say. Cool, but yeah, sometimes the business people, will, you know, agree to a a deadline for something. And you kind of know we're, we're going to slip, right? Mm-hmm, as, mm-hmm. as soon as you hear about what this, you know, phase is supposed to end on, you're like, all right, yeah. <laughs> we're well, a couple can, months into this and like, we're I can't nowhere make that. near. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or, or right. you, you know, you have a product at the end of it, but you know that there's bugs, you know, right. it's like, well, that's also the thing, right? So it's like, uh, it's safety critical code. Right. And so... I mean, you're yeah, literally... You, you can't have a bug because it's like real life stuff. Yeah, so if you have... It's not a, like a video game. It's like, no. you, you know, you can't bug out your UAV and have it See, crash into you, a village That's why you something. have a fail safe where you are coding in something. If something goes wrong, just reset the entire system or something, you know? Yeah, do you have an Alt F4? Do you have something like that? You've got to have something like that. You joke, but there's a few things I where know. if they go off, you... Come back up as quick as you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. try to see if you can come back up. Yeah. No, you have to. Yeah. I mean, like the computers sh- on the system. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right. Oh, yeah. I can imagine, man. I can imagine. That's that's crazy. Yeah. So it's like also, you know, it kind of falls into the car realm because um, software, depending on for cars, right? That's also considered safety critical. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So like. Very true. When you see some bugs within the software of a car, you're just like, okay, well, if it's a bug that you saw, that mm-hmm. means it probably wasn't safety critical. Right. right. It's like the infotainment system or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can I can totally imagine. But even 
even for a car, like most of it is mechanical, you know. I mean, maybe there's, you know, you've got your little OEM right. plug that'll tell you things, right. or maybe your display is wrong, but like the car is going to most, most of the time mechanically work. But like for big, you know, defense projects, yeah. I'm imagining you have like, Radar, scanners, LIDAR, some type of... GPS. Well, I don't even know, yeah. but I imagine Actuators. that it's it's really important. You know, it's not like a mechanical issue, you know? Yeah, so if software is going to control something on the vehicle, mm-hmm. right? Whatever mm-hmm. vehicle it may be, um, it goes through a, a safety critical board, like airworthiness board. Mm-hmm. And basically their job is to pick at your software and their job is to make sure that this thing doesn't fly. And your job is to rebuttal them to make sure it does fly. Wow. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah. So what is your take on the uh, Boeing Airbus scenario, the situation? 737 Max? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. If it, did you hear about this? No. So I don't really know much about it. Maybe you know more. But basically there was a software glitch uh-huh. where. With like one of the big 737 planes, like the ones that fly a ton were, of people. Uh, the yeah, place, plane. yeah, passenger They were plane, trying yeah. to compete with another company uh-huh. that was coming out with this bigger commercial airplane that could that could hold more people or something like that yeah and so they redesigned their 737 come out Mm -hmm. with a newer version Mm -hmm. and they put it had something to do with the turbines where they put the turbines like two feet down Mm -hmm. but that messed up the weight in the plane and so what they did was they actually created a software that uh took that into account to Uh like level the uh i guess i don't know equilibrium of right, the, the, yeah. the plane mm-hmm. and that glitched out multiple times and it crashed twice and killed a bunch of people right yeah yeah whoa and, and they recalled yeah. all the planes yep yeah wow you hear about this no i didn't yeah, hear was about a this big, or uh, in my world it was a pretty big deal yeah. well this i mean that john yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I always think Shout of that out. every time you get on a plane you're like I never, I, I, I don't, I don't get scared because I'm always like, I have no control over Dude, the situation. I see yeah, Boeing exactly. 737, and I, I get scared for my life. It's a 737 Max, uh-huh. but I see seven. Th- I, Even I see, just 737, yeah, you get scared. <laughs> I oh, get shit, scared. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think the last one I flew on was like 757 or something like uh-huh. that, and I was just like, please don't have the same software on this. <laughs> isn't it funny? Well, I want to get your take, but isn't it funny how, as a consumer of you know you flying you think that it's mostly on the pilot, but in reality, it's really on the software yeah. engineers and the mechanical engineers. Aero engineers. Aero sure. engineers, you know, the people that work on the hardware, all that is mainly what it's on, yeah. you know? Yeah, the, the, you know, once you've gone up in there and you've reached altitude, right? You're on autopilot. You're right? on autopilot, yeah. 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 Some planes even do autopilot landing now. Uh, yeah. Uh, Which is ATOL. crazy. Is that what it's called? Automatic takeoff and landing. Yeah, I've heard mm. that. Atoll. Atoll, yeah. okay. All right, anyways, what's your take on the, the whole Airbus thing? Yeah, I mean, I think if Boeing didn't have a defense side, they'd probably be bankrupt right now for sure. Oh, shit. I, really? I think so for sure. Damn. Wow. The government has fed them pretty solid defense uh-huh. projects. And uh, and they got they got bailed out by the government um, when coronavirus hit. Big time. Dude, their stock, insane. Yeah, their stock dropped from like two fifty to like a hundred bucks during that like crash, mm-hmm. and it's like back to like two hundred now. It's like how? Wow, it is but crazy. They also have a an R and D called Phantom Works. They kind of Phantom Works kind of ripped off. <laughs> that sounds kind of cool. Knock <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. Well, it definitely sounds cooler than Skunk Works. Not gonna lie, but, it does. But knowing the history of Skunk Works, like you, you just gotta. But it's funny because I hear Skunk Works, and but you give me the backstory of why it is called Skunk Works, and I'm like, okay, well that makes sense. But without hearing that backstory, I'm just I, I immediately, it sounds like a place where you'd buy pot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, come down to Skunk Works to get your skunky smell. You know, like it's like not like a professional organization. Yeah, right? but that yeah. Phantom name. That, yeah, I think that's cool too. I mean, it ma- yeah. it just matches with you know what you're doing with like radar and like okay. just stealthiness cool, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but I think Skunk Works actually works better because then it's not like a giveaway right you know right like you could you could have an idiot from another you could have a bad guy come to america and you know so walk right by your building and have no idea about the government secrets in there the The problem is is that um it's so famous in uh-huh. terms of r&d that uh, we get spies apparently all the time like people really? outside the 
the like so it's like a half mile long drive just to get to the gate mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. wow and you'll see people with, like video cameras like mm-hmm. recording and like one of my <laughs> it's like so it's like yeah. paparazzi's <laughs> damn yeah. dude I, I i'm not joking one time i left kind of late at night at like 8 p.m or something mm-hmm. and um there's a guy just at the gate just recording i'm like what are you doing <laughs> wow and like uh one of my coworkers said he was showing like he was a fresh college grad he was showing his uh, parents around yeah. and brought them to like the building outside the gate where it's like got a visitor center yeah, yeah, and like yeah. a shop to buy skunk works crap. Really? Right? Yeah. What? Wow, there's like so, fandom. Yeah, yeah. And so, then, <laughs> no, no, you go, you go and finish. And um, I guess some guy was trying to record the gate and like next thing you know, like, because we have on-site, you know, uh-huh. Uh, security security yeah, and yeah. police. Yeah. And legit, they just tackled legit. the guy. Tackle. No, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. That's lit, man. Wait, did you get to see the tackle? I did. It was oh, it was man. him. Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn. yeah. So you just heard about it through the water cooler talk, right, pretty right, much. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that sounds pretty funny. <laughs> wow. Now, would you get in trouble for? Obviously, there's things you can't say, but what if you just started saying things that weren't true? Like you're like you're. Let's say you're leaving at eight o'clock, you and there's you that can't. guy with the cameraman. Could you roll down your window and be like, "Man, that was a long <laughs> that." <laughs> Can you can you roll down your window? <laughs> can you roll I'm down picturing your... that, and I was just oh like, God. "Dude, well, I can't believe we just did what we did." We can't, can't, well, yeah, you, you say know, something like that, or you say something like, "God, I'm so tired of making burgers." Yeah. You know, just something <laughs> totally random. Like, God, so many customers ordering today. Fuck, that's hilarious, man. We do have like a cafe on site, so maybe. Oh, I okay. <laughs> man, why do they all want this? Like, you know, green matcha tea. Dude, <laughs> that, that lettuce wrap today was <laughs> hitting. <laughs> No, I I have pushed, and I hope you don't get mad at me for saying this, but I have pushed Interpret so hard on trying to find out about aliens. <laughs> oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's given me nothing. So I yeah. will say this. Huh. Right. Oh God, here we if, go. If we find out about aliens on the work day, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. You guys will know about it way before me because I have to go to my phone. So you guys are already uh, on the internet. Okay. True. So you'll be the ones telling me that the aliens exist. Okay. Yeah, that's what he's told to say. I, I know. It's yeah. Not. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that's a pretty yeah. that's a pretty good answer, though. <laughs> you know, he's on some weird. You're covering your ground on there. Reverse engineering some some weird alien oh, yeah. propulsion. He's working vehicle. on alien tech, and we don't even know. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I mean, no comment. Yeah, right? Exactly. Comment. No comment. See? Exactly. Like, little do we know that science fiction movies go to Skunk Works to get advice for how to make their movie more realistic. I mean, what company would you trust if something came down like that? You definitely wouldn't trust Boeing. <laughs> no. What's the other one? Raytheon? No Raytheon way. does more missiles. Northrop uh, Grumman is the other big plane North, aircraft. North, what? Northrop G- Grumman. Never heard of them. Dude, I've never heard of them either. I'm telling you. I mean, <laughs> They're you're massive. trusting Lockheed and the government, right? Some, like, secure location in like pasadena or whatever mm-hmm. that's jpl nasa oh jpl mm. okay yeah you trust them too it'd be a joint joint collaboration the government jpl nasa lockheed that's who i would trust honestly thank you and yeah. me yeah, yeah. And thanks me. for having your trust in yeah. us and my and my survival shelter that i've built up in my backyard right. See, right. i would trust that kids. way more a survival shelter yeah, yeah. Oh, well, well yeah because you think about it, if aliens are coming to the planet they got the confidence to do so. And yeah. if they have the confidence to do so and the ability to do so, I think they're, they've already outmatched our technology. Dude, we're barely sending rovers to the moon. Exactly. If they're, getting, yeah. if they're yeah. getting, coming over here, it's business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're coming to do something. Yeah, the, that, that's the funny thing we about... We can't stop them. Yeah, that's the funny thing about people questioning, oh, would aliens come in peace? Yeah. Would you go anywhere in peace when you're like moving from planet to planet? But think... Yeah, you would. Because think, think about like human curiosity right we let's say we've we've gotten to the moon we've gotten to mars but we, think about we're, we're okay. we've yeah. created a civilization then our first uh i don't know voyage outside the solar system we go to some weird you know goldilocks 737 whatever planet right and we find some some mm-hmm. something that can communicate yeah we're not going there to destroy it. We're going there to learn. You know, the only thing that makes me doubt that theory is what is our history. You know, things like what, like the way we've treated indigenous people. Right. I. I, I well, for sure. Okay. You think about point, when we point. go to a different country. Good point. Good point. So, I scratch everything. I <laughs> you know, that's what I, that's what I mean. Like, if you're going <laughs> somewhere, like you already think you're better than wherever you're yeah. going because it's always, like I got here and you can't get to me. I've always thought, right? What if like the aliens are so far advanced is because they were able to work together. 
and like you know the reason we've advanced this much is because of like you know human nature like kind of human greed of mm-hmm. i want to get ahead oh, of the yeah. other group oh, yeah. Yeah, right yeah, yeah what if like they were just like they got so far ahead even further than us because they put all their brains together and made this happen so they actually came in base and then oh, we yeah. just kind of messed that up <clears throat> oh yeah oh That's i totally agree point. with that i've always yeah. thought how how much like it's amazing what humans have done on their time on earth but i think about how much more amazing it could have been if we all worked together like what if we put all our minds together really we're just in unison and like, we could all come to an agreement and we're all like like ants yes like yeah. exactly ants are insane yeah 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 they all have the same idea for the colony mm-hmm. i mean literally they'll sacrifice themselves for the colony yeah i mean that's kind of crazy thought right because the way we work but <laughs> right. yeah. imagine imagine mm-hmm. like it would be insane what we could accomplish, truly. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it just comes down to, like, tribal times mm-hmm. and not having enough resources to get by. So you always fend for yourself before mm-hmm. you fend for others, right? Yeah. What is what is? Did, yeah, that's did, it. Did okay. you get a secret? So you got a new position yes. at, at Lockheed. I just want to make sure. We oh, you want to make sure we get that. I don't want to get in trouble. So you got a new position at Lockheed. You've, you've been in Palmdale... And now you're actually going to move to San Jose. Is that correct? Yeah. So excited about that. What's going on, man? What's going on through your mind? A mix of emotions. Yeah, I'm um, sure. I really like the work that I do, and I really like working for the people I work for. Like my uh-huh. leads are amazing people. Yeah. And I kind of told them this as I was telling them I'm leaving, but definitely not going to meet as nice and technically gifted people like them. That's impossible. Mm-hmm. But. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm more of a Bay Area guy for sure. San Jose is your home. Yeah, I was, I was second guessing it. Um, going back or coming? Going here? back. Okay. Because I, I was like, what if I buy a house in Santa Clarita? Yeah. And try to ride this out, see how it is, mm-hmm. and then, you know, my the Spotify year in review comes up, <laughs> and uh, it's all Bay Area music. High Fee was number three in my <laughs> top genre, so I was like, yeah, I made the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> damn spotify Spotify. (laughs) wow that's cool to hear that yeah that monthly i mean that whole year in review thing is is helping me people make you know feel confident (laughs) about their decisions yeah right i feel bad because you know palmdale is uh, not real i mean it's like it's it's southern california but it's not southern california you know and it's like you came down here but like you you're far away you know like would it take you to get here an hour and a half or something if i was to come here direct yeah yeah Easy. So it's far, you Easy. know, and it's we, the tip we hung out way. one time in like two and a half years or no. Yeah. What, how long have you been there? Uh, like one and a half. One yeah. and a half years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I wish you got sort of the vibe. Um, not that I really would have think you would have chosen different. Like even if you were in LA, you'd probably, you'd probably be like, I want to go back to the Bay, but still, Dude, you there's know? too many people in LA. Oh <laughs> yeah. I can, I can, I can, I uh, can, yeah, second that. Yeah. See, the weird thing about San Jose is there's not actually a ton of people there. I mean, there's a lot of people, but they just there's just not enough land. Yeah. Like it's all taken, and there's yep. too many suburbs. They're all big single family homes. Yep. It's just like it's not. There is a downtown, but the downtown is not a big city. Maybe it's, like five blocks of you know. Yeah, you know. and even then, it's not. They're not like big skyscrapers. It's like Riverside. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, that's because of the airport hmm. they're so close to the airport oh FAA really? regulations won't let them build higher wow yeah. wow i don't know i feel like san jose has a real zoning problem in my opinion that's holding them back from taking off into like a actual big big city you know yeah i mean part of me hopes that never happens because i don't like going to sf mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. because of that reason there's just too many people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like how it's suburbs surrounded by like a downtown, like a mini downtown, right? Where oh, you, you still have center some, and stuff. Right, right. In San Jose. That's yeah. kind of nice. So if you ever want to do the downtown going out, yeah. you can. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not really in that phase of my life where I want to keep right, doing right, that. Right, right, right. So I still have the ability to raise a family if mm. I choose to do so in the future, right? The suburbs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the reason that housing is so high there. It's like insane um pay like a million dollar home for like a shack yeah for like a crack of box <laughs> yeah three bedroom one bath yeah yeah dude, it's insane yeah i'm sure basically you you spend a million dollars on a house that would cost a hundred thousand dollars in another state oh yeah but what's what's crazy is it's such a good investment it's like if you can afford a home 
right now, you should get one. Yeah. Because the market is just continuing to go up. Yeah. And, you know, people are like, oh, it was, you know, it's housing, you know, crash or whatever. But, like, maybe housing is overvalued at this point. But the demand for houses is always going to be there. And the supply for houses is not going to be enough. Especially in hubs like that, right? Right, yeah. right. Uh, therefore, the cost of the home is just going to continue to go up. Uh, yeah. At a much faster rate than inflation. So. <clears throat> yeah, like your house here, San home. Jose doesn't build homes like this anymore. The yeah, last like bet, seven no. or so years, it's your garage, living room, Super kitchen. Compact. And then, yeah, you don't have a backyard. You don't have a front yard. Mm, yeah. Almost a million dollars for that. Like, yeah, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. most are. So is San Jose littered with HOAs now? Thankfully not. I mean, those like stackable homes. Yeah. 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 But uh, outside of that, no, it's v- because a lot of the uh, the neighborhoods are established already, mm-hmm. so they don't have HOA, which right. is a major plus. Well, that's that's the reason why we we came all the way out to your Belinda, because I was you know, I mean, ideally, uh, we were going to be closer to Irvine, which is mm. where you're at today. Right. Um, but literally, there are. There's like maybe 5% of the homes in Irvine are single family, no HOA. That's what my buddy was saying, yeah. And the HOAs in Irvine are insanely <laughs> overpriced. I mean, it's like $500, $500 a month. Just what would to you live be there. paying them for? Yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. You're, on top of your mortgage, right? So Exactly. That's like paying a subscription. <laughs> that's like, like, you're like, oh yeah, I pay for Netflix monthly. It's like, I also pay for my house monthly. Right. right? Well, and, and you own it. It's like, what yeah, the fuck? Right. I don't. Yeah. I'm not renting this well, place. Why about, am I paying rent? Th- think about when you p- finally pay off your home. It's you still, s- pay. still have to pay HOA. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's like you finally paid off, and like, okay, just so you can put I a gate code it. in. Like what? Yeah, I get it. Property taxes is one thing, you know, <sighs> whatever. Like, it's the government, but like, then you have this organization which is just homeowners themselves mm-hmm. making these rules. And there's not many laws that restrict them from doing anything. That's what's crazy about it is they don't have much uh, regulations. So they can just keep making rules. And it's kind of insane. It's kind of insane. Um, I mean, what what time we at, dude? We are at uh, just over an hour. So we're we're hitting the... uh, I can't... Doesn't it shut down at like an hour 10? Yeah, we should probably uh, wrap it up soon. But is there anything else uh, you wanted to, to really talk about? No, just uh. Oh well, your new position, man. What we didn't uh, even talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh yeah, because you're moving to San Jose for a new position. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's still with Lockheed. Uh-huh. Um, I'm transferring internally, but I'm going to the Sunnyvale site. Um, and they do space. So, oh like, really, dude? And stuff like that. Wow, yeah. that's so cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, God, that's really fucking gosh. sweet. Damn, dude. Uh, so it's it's all right. <laughs> Fuck. So it's like. You know, sad. he's so fucking cool. No, it's <laughs> awesome because, like, now, so yeah, now, all, right. Aliens, all I'm saying, yeah. you know, when I drive to my next exactly. location using my navigation system, I'm just going to think about how yep. you're going to be working on the satellite that's going to be helping that you're out. You're basically yeah. an astronaut, is what they're trying to say. That is yeah, what I'm yeah, trying right, to say. Yeah. You're doing, you're going to space without actually having to go to space. So, right, what, yeah. what can you tell us about uh, that role? Or do you, I mean, I'm assuming you don't know too much at this point. It's also a classified program, but they okay. do know, like, they already have the satellites up. Uh, uh-huh. it's, at this point, it's maintaining mm. them and and f- making sure they don't fall out of orbit, right? Right. And, that's crazy to think. Yeah. You know, you're sitting on a computer working on something that's just yeah. so far away from you, do and you, you're connected to it. It's do just you like know goddamn. How software updates work. I mean, I guess oh, you're just dude. connected to the satellite. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes it's pretty yeah, easy. Then. But like, um, basically, I was told to your code has to be as compact as possible because oh, they can't right, take right. too much data at right. once, right? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. Now, I don't know if you can answer this, but was there ever a scenario, because this happens a lot in movies, when there's something flying through space, it usually, they, they put in a shot of it hitting a satellite and just smashing mm-hmm. the satellite into pieces. And I, I'm wondering, like, if you're like, is there a way, like, you're working on a certain satellite and you, does it have sensors to where, like, you're typing, doing something, and then you get, like, a notification saying, oh, there's an asteroid approaching your satellite. Can you, like, move it to the right to make the asteroid miss? Yeah, so, yeah, I think, I think, right. Yeah, so there are sensors for that. Uh-huh. And, you know, they track asteroids way before. Okay. Um. Nice. But in terms of moving a satellite, mm-hmm. that's really not the case. The reason it's in orbit is because, it's always moving. Yeah, and Duh. it's always moving at the constant <laughs> speed, so yeah. you can you always know 
what your satellites and what like other country satellites are looking at at a certain time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And t- it costs so much fuel to burn in order to move it. Mm-hmm. It's just not even worth it. So, moment. yeah, but and probably most of the time, since it's always moving, you see a, a meteor coming from X amount of distance and you already know that it's going to be the orbits. I mean, the satellite's going to be in this spot right. when the meteor passes the spot right. the satellite's in right now. So you're like, okay, I'm good. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that was that whole scenario with the Russian... They tried to destroy one of their old satellites or something like that. And then they created, quote unquote, a million pieces of space debris. <laughs> yeah. That, and what's crazy is because when you're in space, you're in this this vacuum, right? Right. And when you're orbiting the Earth, you're going some insane speed, like over a thousand miles per hour. Yeah. yeah. It's literally a penny or anything touches anything and it's like an explosion, right? right. If you're going in right. opposite directions. Right. So it's kind of crazy. And man, I mean, if you're going to be trying to manage that, that's insane. Man. <laughs> that is really cool. That's yeah, you guys are putting so much pressure on me at first. I was like, <laughs> guys, well, hey, it's all right. uh, don't mess up. Yeah, right? don't mess up. Okay. I'll hear about it. Yeah. I really need yeah, to know how to get to places. Cool. You know, I, it's all, I'm relying on that. <laughs> Simply that. I don't know what I'm doing without it. Wow, man. That's so cool. Oh, man. Space. Wow. Space. You should work for like SpaceX next or Final Frontier. Yeah, I thought about it, but um, you, got, you, got, you got a lot of time. I like know? a little bit of work life balance. That's good. And that, also, I've heard good. I've heard it's hell. It's hell. Yeah. Any of any of those any I of the companies. Yes. I mean, even it's apparently Elon makes it hell for himself too. So it's like if it's hell on the CEO, I can't imagine what the employee is. It right. Well, that's that's where the expectation lies. Yeah. It's coming down from the the CEO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. I can imagine, man. Are you still going to work with, uh, what? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Are you still going to work, uh, on site? Is kind of going to be the same situation or are you going to be able to do remote? Um, no, yeah, it's still on site classified work. So thankfully wow. this is mature. So I don't have as much, um, you know, we're doing this plan now. We're doing that plan now. Uh, okay. You know, we're pivoting like crazy. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be a little bit mature. It's not R and D basically. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully. Okay, okay. Um, cool, I say cool. thankfully, but I like, I really like the R and D portion. Well, you probably it's learn so a ton, you know? So fun. Dude. Yeah. There's a lot more responsibility on you, probably. You could still choose, or not responsibility, but more decision making. I'd imagine definitely you, you yeah. need to make decisions on you know solutions or right. frameworks and stuff. That's super cool, man. Super cool. Well, that's it. That's, that's all I it. got. Unless I is there anything else you want to talk about? No, thanks for having cool. me on. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Well, you yeah, know what? Dude. I gotta say, we're gonna keep this going for as long as we can. So we need we need you to come back on when you have stuff that isn't classified, or we can just keep quizzing you on classified stuff because yeah. it's fun when my next time my apple maps crashes mm-hmm. we'll have oh. you on yeah so yeah we'll we talk will. about right. what Hell you yeah. messed up on <laughs> yeah that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> all right well thanks for coming on interpret episode 101 we always close with a cheers right. cheers up cheers it's all good if it's oh. empty oh, yeah. cheers up brother fake sip, okay know? all right thanks for listening everybody peace out bye right.